For the past several years, I've been involved in organizing the exhibition Osco Elite of the Obscure, a project that grew out of several years more of archival research and ongoing conversations with the artists. Osco Elite of the Obscure is the first museum retrospective focused on the Osco artists, known for their innovative intermedia performance and conceptual art. The exhibition and accompanying catalog spotlight the group's incisive blend of conceptualism, public art, political awareness, and social commentary, often with a sardonic edge and satiric wit. The exhibition premiered at the LA County Museum of Art in fall of 2011 and is currently on view here at the Williams College Museum of Art through July 2012. The Osco retrospective has provided the opportunity to think and ideally also to rethink and reconsider some of the key images associated with the Osco art group, especially now that the exhibition, the artists, and the artworks have garnered an expanded public visibility and circulation. Let me introduce you to the artists. Creating art by any means necessary, while often using their bodies and guerrilla tactics, the OSCO group merged activism and performance, and in the process pushed the boundaries of Chicano art. OSCO began as a tight-knit core group of artists from East Los Angeles, including Harry Gamboa Jr., Gronk, Willy Heron, and Patsy Valdez, frequently in collaboration with Humberto Sandoval. They took the name OSCO, from the forceful word for disgust and nausea in Spanish, and through performance, public art, and multimedia, responded to the turbulent social political period in Los Angeles and in a larger international context. During Osco's 15 years of activity, the group made artwork that exuberantly defied categories such as public and private, concrete and conceptual, art and life, and blurs not only the implicit boundaries among mediums, but also finer distinctions between, for instance, a performance and its remains. And here I'm thinking specifically about the ways in which documents of the body in performance constitute the performance remains and continue to circulate. The exhibition pre presents a broad synthesis of the numerous conceptual underpinnings of the group, including experimentation and collaboration, the body engaged with the city, and a reimagining of media culture. Importantly, our exhibition highlights Oscar's involvement in and critical response to muralism through experimentation in form and content, and highlights the development of the group's various unannounced urban interventions. And here you can see two murals created in collaboration by the artists Willie Heron and Gronk in the early 1970s at approximately the same time, um, somewhat slightly before these other kind of unannounced urban activities I'll be showing you. Generally speaking, Chicano art developed in the decades of the 1960s and 70s alongside the promotion of distinctly public forms of art, particularly posters and muralism. These public genres are often recognized as the essential visual expression of the activism and social demands associated with the Chicano movement. As a result, it's been assumed that the art that emerged in conjunction with the Chicano movement is largely representational, narrative, or figurative, mythological or religious. Osco took an alternative route down this well-traveled path. Through their various invented mediums, such as instant murals and walking murals, Osco mobilized the convention of street murals from a static media to a moving and performance medium. These intrepid works function as probing explorations of the aesthetic and political effectiveness of murals in and of themselves and in presenting an alternative, they offer a critical commentary on the proliferation and content of murals in their community. Osco worked to enliven and rethink murals in an attempt to make mobile and elastic a form of art that by the early 1970s for some artists had become institutionalized and all too often resulted in nationalistic or domestic themes and iconography. With innovative projects like Walking Mural, Osco incorporated the elements of graffiti and performance art, infusing the medium with a new flexibility, movement, and ephemerality. In the group's Walking Mural performance, a mural becomes so disenchanted with its immobility and the environment that it breaks free from its wall. The performance was meant to invoke the annual East Los Angeles Christmas Parade, which had been canceled due to a police riot 
following a peaceful anti-Vietnam War protest. The social protest utilized public performance to reclaim social space. Oscar repeatedly performed on Whittier Boulevard because of the high pedestrian traffic there, and they hoped that their bold appearance would elicit curiosity and questioning. Several questions emerge when considering this work. Once the performance has been actualized, how is its meaning communicated? And what constitutes the work of art, the action or the documentation, or some interchange or some traffic in between? And then how are the performance's meanings transformed, expanded, or altered, or alternatively and very conceivably fragmented, reduced, or condensed through circulation and recontextualization across time and space? These are the predicaments of performance art that involve questions of evidence and meaning, questions of medium and preservation, and questions of presentation and interpretation. Oscar's experimentation with within, Oscar's experimentation within and across various media generally functioned to challenge the conventions associated with each media they explored. For example, Oscar agitated the medium of muralism by making it active and mobile and incorporating the body directly into it. Concurrently, Oscar worked with performance and movement to still it. They created still photographic images that could both record the work and represent it once it had been completed. Thus, the photo document of the action or the intervention served as both evidence and as art object. This deliberate blurring of the lines between what constituted the art object and its photographic documentation is an essential part of Osco's contribution to contemporary art. The Osco artists expanded the medium of muralism to make it mobile and performative, and in the process merged muralism with conceptual art. Gronk, who had previously established himself with Willy Heron as a noteworthy muralist, performed as auteur in instant mural, taping Patsy Valdez and frequent collaborator not shown here, Umberto Sandoval, to a wall. As traffic sped past on Whittier Boulevard, Gronk used thick white paper tape to temporarily enshrine Valdez's body. She then burst forth from the tape, an embodiment of self-awareness as a mutable and transgressive image in the urban landscape. The photograph of the spontaneously staged street event captures a cinematic quality, one that we might be able to read as cinema verite on the wall. Following my earlier series of questions, Instant Mural actualizes, indeed, Instant Mural emblematizes one of the essential issues and questions associated with performance art, and that is the tensions between the idea, the action, and the documentation. And with this specific example of Instant Mural, I would like to propose another question as well. Can we read Instant Mural as political in implication and as emancipatory in effect? I've considered this on one level, another context, to describe how the work engages or makes possible a series of questions, such as, what does it mean to be young and poor and Chicano in East Los Angeles, given the social and historical conditions of the early 1970s? In this regard, instant mural functions as a metaphor for thinking about how people can be confined by and within conditions of oppression and discrimination poverty, and other social and psychological issues. Gronk, seen on the left, is experimenting with making a temporary live diorama using the most available and economical means, a body, Patsy Valdez's body, and masking tape. Patsy looks frozen and confined, but we know that it's not literal, that she could break free at any time. In this action and in the photograph, there's a powerful play between movement and stasis and inaction and agency and mobility and immobilization. This then is a more conceptual representation and a probing exploration of social issues affecting the community. It involves a public performance or a happening and an image that asks us to consider what are the restraints that confine us and how might we break free? How might we be held captive or otherwise in bondage by forces both perceptible and imperceptible, immediate and remote. At once enigmatic and alluring, Osco's instant mural sought to provoke the passersby who saw it, 
to get them to think about what was happening and to question what it might mean for participants, for the participants and the observers. The animation or the emancipation occurs at another moment in the instance after this image when Patsy Valdez and Humberto Sandoval come off the wall, as in the walking mural, empowered and liberated. Thus, we can begin to see the various levels of activity and the registers of meaning activated by the instant mural. There is the interaction or the exchange between bodies, between the materials, the tape, the wall as the physical space and the site, and the social space of the city. This dynamic social interaction becomes part of the process and also a component of, if not the medium itself. Here the body is clearly being used as an artistic medium and so is the city, all in the name of another medium, namely muralism. This constellation of meaning and uses brings me to consider the specific geographic site and historical context for the instant mural performance. In a recent short essay by founding OSCO member and artist Harry Gamboa Jr., he describes a historical exhibition of photographs taken during a period of organized anti-war protests in East Los Angeles from about 1969 through 1971. And in a particularly key moment in this period, the Chicano Moratorium, an anti-war rally that ended with a riot and the death of prominent journalist Ruben Salazar. A photograph by Victor Aleman triggered a memory for Gamboa of another moment in time when Los Angeles County deputy sheriffs responded to protesting crowds with excessive force. Since Harry Gamboa's words and narrative are so poignant, I'd like to share them with you by reading a short section of his recollection. And the title of this recollection is appropriately Against the Wall, Remembering the Chicano Moratorium. On January 31st, 1971, nearly a dozen uniformed Los Angeles County deputy sheriffs lined up across the intersection of Whittier Boulevard as several hundred young people marched peacefully along Arizona Street in protest against ongoing police intimidation and brutality in the Chicano community. Gamboa continues, the demonstration became eerily theatrical as deputies raised their fully loaded shotguns while the unarmed protesters approached the boulevard. The deputies suddenly began free firing their weapons many times and scores of wounded people fell to the asphalt while many others scattered for relative safety. At least one individual was killed." Close quote. Alleman's image just before the gunfire presents a frozen scene an instant that at first seems subdued as those on the street stand waiting, but simultaneously menacing as one notices a corps of police in the distance about to clash violently with the crowd. After escaping from an onslaught of seemingly indiscriminate gunfire, Gamboa vowed to find, quote, an alternate method of confrontational street politics, close quote an interventionist methodology that he would work out together with OSCO members. OSCO would return to the scene of violence and suppression repeatedly over the next few years to execute unsanctioned public performances. For example, OSCO's first supper after a major riot from 1974 memorialized the junction of Arizona Avenue and Whittier Boulevard the particular stretch of road that saw actions by police result in violence. And Patsy Valdez and Humberto Sandoval were taped to a wall to create instant mural at that exact same location that appears in the Alleman photograph. Thus, instant mural might be read as a fleeting memorial, an ephemeral commemoration to a period of violent history and the community's response and specifically, a group of artists' commitment to creativity and experimentation in light of violence that led them to imagine such an alternative method to confrontational street politics through a series of urban performances and provocations. What comes into focus in the image of Osco's instant mural is Los Angeles's history of art and activism and a history of the disenfranchised gaining voice and claiming voice at the same time. 
I want to believe that it retains some of this and mobilizes these meanings and perhaps various new ones through its movement from city street and wall to photography and photographic slide to printed book in magazines and newspapers to banners promoting the retrospective exhibition on the campuses of the two organizing institutions, the Williams College Museum of Art and the LA County Museum of Art. Staged on the city streets of East Los Angeles, Osco's instant mural has since been further mobilized, including on the back of shuttle buses that traversed various routes, neighborhoods, and locales across Southern California in conjunction with the Getty's sprawling Pacific Standard Time Art in LA 1945 to 1980 initiative and its multi-institutional year-long season of art exhibitions, performances, and programs. It is perhaps ironic that this ephemeral performance, an instant mural staged in a flash with available and disposable materials, with no budget to speak of, no scaffolds, no paintbrushes, no buckets, endless buckets of paint, no permissions, no permits, no city meetings with bureaucrats, had, has had such a seemingly robust life, or should we say afterlife? such an extensive movement and vast transmission and influence. It has conceivably achieved wider circulation. The instant mural has conceivably achieved a wider circulation as an ephemeral work than if it had been designed to be a permanent mural and thus subjected to the environmental damage or neglect or otherwise faded from years of exposure to the bright California sun and air pollution. I don't have a conclusion I suppose I'm still thinking. But ever since the OSCO Symposium held last weekend, I've kept thinking about the artist, the scholar, and the curator, Amalia Mesa Baines's question and the example of the OSCO artist when she asked, what does it mean to be unruly, young, and challenging during turbulent times? To this we can add, what does it mean to be adventurous, innovative, and experimental while relatively powerless or working from outside of the institutions of power? These are questions that I hope we can consider and continue to consider. And I encourage each of us to think about them in the context of, of the history of the 1970s in Los Angeles, but also from our present perspective. Perhaps then we will be better prepared to recognize and listen to the unruly challenges of the young and disenfranchised in the future. Thank you.